can start now. A very good evening and warm welcome. I'm Zeba Banu from final year BCom. Today's webinar is a hot topic for discussion among all the citizens of the country. Budget creates an emotional response to the economic well-being of individuals. It's an honor today to have with us eminent personality Dr. Suresh BK Naidu. I request Dr. Reena Francis, Dean of Commerce and Management, to welcome the gathering. A very good evening to one and all. I'm very glad to welcome all to this session on a review of Union Budget 2021, which is organized by the Department of Commerce, St. Philomena's College, Mysore. Having felt the need to have little more exposure into the aspect of union budget and this topic being a common interest of all, this session is open for all. We have amidst us Reverend Father, Dr. Bernard Prakash Barnes, Rector, Manager of St. Philomena's College. I, on behalf of all, welcome you, Father, for this session. We have with us our beloved principal, Dr. Ruth Shantakumari. Madam, welcome you for this session. We have with us IQAC director, Dr. Bernard Prakash Barnes. Welcome you, sir. We have with us the eminent speaker, Dr. Suresh BK Naidu. Sir, you are the uh, limelight of this particular session. Welcome you, sir. You. We have so many participants who are accessing through the YouTube. All the participants are most welcome for this meaningful session. I take this opportunity to welcome all my colleagues, the faculties of St. Philomena's College, both teaching, non-teaching. All the students from all disciplines are most welcome for this session. Hope this session will be a very fruitful, useful session. Thank you, one and all. And once again, welcome each one of you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to you, ma'am. It's my pleasure to invite the respected principal of our college, Dr. T. Ruth Shantakumari for presidential address. A pleasant evening to all of you. Reverend Father, Banat Prakash Ban is the director manager of this institution. Mr. Prakash, the IQC coordinator, Dr. Sunil De Souza, Dr. Rina Francis, and other faculty members of Department of Commerce, all the students and the members of the public who might have joined this session. A very pleasant evening. Uh, when the end of January comes, almost everybody in the country gets a sort of curiosity a lot of anticipation, a lot of apprehension, a lot of expectations. It may be salaried class, it may be business people, large scale, petty business, and everybody budget. In the February, month of February budget, when budget is presented, everybody is so curiously waiting to see the impact of budget on their lives. So this is one of the few issues which touch the lives of every Indian in one way or the other. And every year after budget is presented, it's not so easy for all the stakeholders to analyze and understand the implication of this budget in their lives. So as a very meaningful initiative, the Department of Commerce, faculty members of Department of Commerce have arranged a review of this budget 2021 for the advantage of students, for the advantage of common man, common public, for the advantage of all the people, so that a very technical aspect of budget is deciphered in simple terms and everybody can understand, plan their future savings and all the other issues related with budget. So I congratulate the Department of Commerce for having planned this commendable uh, idea or program and I wish them all the good luck for their future endeavors and 
even hopefully this uh, review will help our faculty members and other people to plan their savings and tax calculation all those things in future also so i wish them all good luck and i hope all the uh, beneficiaries of this uh, session will get some positive input from this thank you thank you ma'am now i call upon assistant professor suprita r from department of commerce to introduce the speaker good evening everyone it is my privilege to introduce one of the most sought after speaker dr suresh b k naidu for today's most relevant topic for the day on union budget 2021 dr suresh b k naidu is a student focused and dedicated professional with more than 19 years of teaching research and administration experience in the premier education institute university he headed the department of business administration at bms college for women bangalore from 1997 to 2010 he also headed rban ms first grade evening college bangalore has principal from 2005 to 2010 from 2010 he is working under tumkur university as associate professor he did his mcom from bangalore university pg d ba from bangalore university mphil from pirivar university fd pm from iim ahmedabad phd from tumkur university he, he is exceptionally interpersonal enthusiastic individual with outstanding academic communication organizational and people skills and a passion for teaching research and administration he is ex expertise in teaching subjects of business management human resources management strategic management cost and financial analysis financial accounting management accounting financial management international business accounting information system e-commerce and accounting for managers he has published more than 40 research articles both in national and international journals and conference proceedings he has also authorized for eight edited books he has participated and presented more than 80 research papers both in national and international conference he visited countries like japan canada bangkok makwa malaysia singapore and sri lanka He has also undergone with professional training of skill based programs he is also the member of several professional bodies he has participated and delivered numerous invited talks special lecturers chaired the sessions in the conference in the reputed institution across the countries particularly in bangalore based business schools this being is impressive resume and i now hand over the session to dr suresh b k naidu over to you sir very good evening to one and all uh revered father blood principal of uh, the prestigious the college in uh, mysore saint philomena's autonomous college and my esteemed faculty members of the college and my dear uh, beloved students and the audience of this particular webinar session am i audible i just want to know yes sir okay fine for the development of the nation the infrastructure that can be created for the years to go the infrastructure that will be there for years to yield the fruits for the next generations to come so that is the second pillar in which they have considered the third one is the development for aspirational india 
the inclusive growth for the indian the india so the developmental activities based upon the aspirations so the, the third third pillar that is identified the fourth one is called based on the human capital the human capital is the most uh, most important aspect in everyday activities on the functioning of the government and the lives of the pe- lives of the people are the human beings role in activities of the functioning of the government or the corporate it is vital so in that way as a prominence has been given for human capital the fifth pillar is called the innovation and r&d the science and technology plays a very vital role there is a need and the necessity for creation and the innovation innovate innovativity or creativity in the field of the science and technology or the manufacturing or any field of industry for that matter is a greater amount of significance has been allocated or given for this innovation and r&d departments in particular the science and technology or the health or corporate sectors and etc so that is the fifth pillar that has been identified and sixth pillar here is mainly pertaining to the government reforms there is the minimum government and for maximum governance in order to give the best out of the services which can be rendered by the government to every citizen in this country to a greater extent so optimization of the maximization is the concept of this union government of india in order to provide with the minimum resources or with the available resources the optimum resources can be maximized to benefit the every citizen in this country in all nook and corner nook and corner of this particular country so to provide or to give the maximum governance or uh, maybe a transparent governance or a fair governance or it is a, a transparent free i can say uh, that kind of a governance that is being expected in this particular uh, year in the financial year 2120 2021-22. As I said, the health and well-being is the main focus on strengthening of uh, three pillars and uh, so three areas. The first pillar is being the health and well-being, and this health and well-being is focusing mainly on three particular areas. The one is called the preventive area, second is called the curative area, and the third one is called the well-being of the human beings. the government has given the more amount of priority for the health to the tune of 65000 crores and it is spread across for various kind of an activities in the department of uh, health and family welfare just to, to give an hint about this health of uh, the, the uh, to give the pro- prominent for the health of human beings 35000 crores have been earmarked for just for providing the vaccine to every citizen of this nation see i'll give a simple example with respect to this 35000 crores how it has been earmarked whether this is the sufficient amount for all the human beings in this country or not say let us say an example of the vaccine say an example a vaccine that may cost around some 200 rupees for example 200 rupees per dosage this 35000 crores can can be spent at the rate of 200 rupees per dose that is 35000 crores divided by 200 you'll get some 175 crore dosages 175 crore dosages it is for 135 crore population so 130 175 crore divided by 130 140 crore see on an average we'll get 1.25 dosage for every human being i mean to say every citizen is is going to get the vaccine in this particular great nation so it's a simple mathematics where the family welfare department has taken this kind of initiative that everybody in this country one or other day should be given the vaccination to a greater extent at free of cost though the cost of production may be around some 200 rupees per dosage and on that basis it is calculated 
So this is kind of a forethought way the government, the Indian government has taken an initiative in order to provide the vaccine where the numerous people that is, uh, uh, you know, have suffered a lot just because of this coronavirus. So in order to safeguard from that particular virus, the government has taken an initiative just to, to spend 35,000 rupees exclusively for this coronavirus vaccine. And even the government, it's a, see, yeah, I'm going to have this presentation only in a nutshell manner. I'm not in a position to cover the, the, the entire budget and just maybe a prominent things in which I'll be specifying. Uh, in order to set up the good number of uh, you know, centers, you know, uh, uh, in order to uh, have a good number of centers, accessibility of health facilities for all, on that basis, the government has decided in order to have 17,000 centers in the rural area and 11,000 centers in the urban area, and including critical care units of critical care units in almost all 602 districts. So this is kind of a, the facility in which the government has taken in protect the health of every citizen's health. And when it comes to the commitment, the nation's commitment, this budget is committed. There is a firm commitment we can find in order to boost the economic growth by way of the pillars, six pillars. One among the pillars is called the infrastructure development. The next is called the development of what? Developmental or infrastructure development is possible only when if there is a capital expenditure. This particular capital expenditure has been enhanced by 35%, 34.5% when compared to the previous year budget estimates 2021. So around 1,42,151 crores have been added to the current budget when compared to the previous year budget just to create the nation's, nation's uh, infrastructure for the development of infrastructure. So that is possible only when we can create the we can create the good amount of infrastructure and that will that will have a, a kind of a continuous uh, fruits or maybe a continuous benefit in the years to come. So it is not a one time kind of a benefit in which we will be receiving out of the uh, amount in which we have been spent by the Indian government of India and years together the amount of uh, you know the benefit that will be received by all the people in this particular nation and the government is trying to reset the economy position what was earlier prior to 2020 of course this 2020 it has become like a just a, a zero year and the performance in all angles by in all sectors has come to negative and in order to reset so is uh, you know the kind of a position which is being have we, we, we the people are having it is not so favorable in such a way that every every sector needs to strive hard in order to come back to the normal position and normalcy is going to happen maybe another year or two that depends upon the the sector and certain certain sectors already come to already has come to normalcy and few more sectors needs to have a certain amount of time in order to come back to the normalcy so in order to reset the economy position the government is fully prepared in order to have the same kind of a position what it was in the year 2019. Then, there are some kind of a highlights in which I would like to say here is when it comes to education is concerned, the government is ready to start around 38,000 crores in order to spend 38,000 crores for 38,000 38, crores as well as 40,000 crores in order to set up the schools in the rural areas as well as hilly regions, that is to say, the mountains. The government intends to have to increase this FDI limit, especially in the field of insurance. See, in the last budget, where the FDI was limited to 49% when it comes to the insurance sector, now they wanted to increase from 49% to 74%. There is a disinvestment push and there will be a bad bank proposal and of course there is a, it is a debatable one some people may accept it is good some people may say that it is a bad proposition but anyway there are some kind of a pros and cons are there with respect to this disinvestment the only intention with respect to this investment push here is in order to clean up 
the system which has been prevailing in those kind of sectors, container corporation or Bharat Atmos Limited or Air India or uh, IDBA Bank, there are some kind of loopholes which have been uh, which have been there in those companies, uh, those sectors, and in order to cleanse the system or in order to uplift the position, and the government is going for disinvestment and see that these kind of things have to be done in a span of a year or two and we need to wait and watch what is the repercussions that is going to happen with respect to these sectors it could be a bemel or air india or container corporation of india and the government is government wants to have uh, there is a linkage between production incentives whichever the organizations or the companies or the sectors are producing good amount of production and incentive link based has to be given. Higher the production, higher the incentive, lower the production, lower the incentive. It is purely based upon the performance. The sectors in which they are performing very well, the sec those sectors are performing very well, they'll be given the good amount of incentives for the development and the developmental activities. And if the sectors are not in a position to perform well as per the stipulated, uh, uh, what do you call, the targets and where, they, are, they may not be eligible to get the incentives, additional incentives. So for that, the government has earmarked around some 2 lakh crore only for this production link incentive schemes. If you look at the total budget of this nation, it is around some 34 lakh 50,305 crore. 34 lakh, 34.5 lakh crore, lakh crore budget is the total budget which has been designed in order to spend in the forthcoming financial year. This 34,50,305 crore, which has been completely, if you compare with the previous year, there is an additional increase of 7.63 7 lakh crore. And the second uh, second, pa second package is called 20 lakh crore and later in a four phases the government has sanctioned in spite of that along with that the government has announced another 7.5 lakh crore for this existing budget though there is a deficit revenue deficit to the tune of 11.5 lakh crore and which is purely less by 5.1 percent as in 2021 of course the total revenue may not match with the total expenditure and there is a fiscal deficit, the revenue deficit which is being identified to the tune of 11.4. And the total amount of expenditure cannot be met out of the total receipts which will be generated in this uh, country and the government is mainly depending upon the borrowings or the loans from different fields. So that can be, the deficit can be matched and with the help of the the loans which are the loans to be borrowed from outside of funds. I'll show you how the rupee comes in the next and forthcoming slides. So out of this 11 lakh, uh, 11 lakh crores, uh, around some 7, crore, 7 lakh crores is the primary deficit. So this is the chart in which the, uh, you know, the budget it shows where the total receipts is 34 lakh 83,236 uh, for the uh, current financial year 2021. As before last year, that's in 1920, the budget it was some 26 lakh crores, and in the last year it has gone up to 34 lakhs. And current year, the Atmanirbhar Bharat budget now it is 34 lakh 83,236 lakh crores. And this is what the budget revenue uh, revenue deficit and the primary deficit, which already I have uh, I have shown, where. This total receipts to the tune of 34 lakhs that will be spent totally completely 34 lakh. And the remaining balance that, that can be obtained by way of granting aid for creation of capital assets on, on capital account that will be that will be met in the later stages. So this 34 lakh crores, how exactly the government is going to get? How this kind of a rupee comes from? from what are the sources through which the government is going to generate. So mainly the rupee comes mainly from 36 paise, 36 percent, sorry, 36 percent mainly comes from the borrowings and other liabilities. 
Apart from these borrowings, the rest of 64%, 64% is from the nation's uh, different sources. 13% comes from the corporation tax, 14% comes from the income tax, 3% comes from the customs tax, union excess duties, and GST, non-tax revenue, non-debt revenue. So it's hardly around some 60% will be the amount that can be generated by the nation out of various forms of taxes and various duties or other assets. And the remaining 36% invariably has to depend upon the borrowings or other liabilities of the nation. Of these 34 crores, how exactly the rupee goes? How it is to be spread? It? What are the priorities? Where exactly this money goes? The entire money that will be generated, the entire money, how exactly it goes? So the major amount, it will go for the shares, the, the state shares. So the you know, every state, every state is, is getting certain part of the budget from the center. So around some 60%, 16, 16, 16% will go to the all the states of uh, the countries as a share. And 20% it will go in the form of interest. As 36% uh, is mainly in the form of interest and borrowing. So around 20% will go for refund by way of interest and refund. Then the rest will come to rest will come to the central uh, the schemes of that have been sponsored by the central government or in the form of finance commission transfers to the various kinds of the departments. And around 8% it will be spent for a defense purpose, 10% for the finance commission, 5% for the pensions, and 10% for the other expenditure. So on that basis, the government is going to spend for various purposes. If you look at the major allocations, how the government has allocated, the first priority, the highest amount, it will go to the Ministry of Defense to the tune of 4.78 uh, crore, lakh crore, 4.78 lakh crore to the Ministry of Defense. And next and subsequent comes to Food and Civil Supply and Home Affairs, Ministry of Rural Development, Agriculture, and eighth position comes to Ministry of Education, that is our own ministry, we being into the colleges and the universities. For the entire nation, we have 93,224 crore rupees for the Department of Education, having, having in this particular country, 100 plus, sorry, 1,000 plus universities all across the country, and millions of students, around some, uh, you know, millions of students are pursuing the higher education. So this 93,224 lakh, 24 crores will be spent for education purpose. In the next and subsequent slide, we in detail, we let us have an interaction with respect to the Ministry of Education is concerned. See, if you look at the highlights of this budget, this is the first time where uh, the Honorable Finance Minister, uh, where she has presented her budget in a digital format, where uh, she has released in the form of a soft copy by having a you know, budget app where an ordinary human being can watch the highlights of this particular budget and the entire information, the budget documents in the form of soft form. And as I said, there are uh, 64,180 crores are allocated for health schemes as the first pillar is called the health and wellness. And if you compare with the previous year, there are about 135% has been increased compared to the previous year when it comes to the segment of uh, the health is concerned. And exclusively for the vaccine is concerned, 35,000 crores have been allocated in order to meet the vaccine for everybody in this particular country. Every citizen is uh, uh, to get an opportunity in order to get vaccinated. And the government is, you know, pleasure to announce that in order to increase or in order to create the good amount of employment all across the country, they, have, they, are, they, are, they are creating seven mega textile investment parks and that will be launched in a span of staggered with the three years. So uh, taking into consideration of all the regions all across the country, east, west, north, south, south, east, uh, south, east and northeast, like that central, all the seven corners of uh, seven corners of the country taken into consideration in order to set up the mega textile parks in order to create employment, in order to generate the revenue, and in total, the India is going to become the, the major exporter of textile to many countries. 
And in order to meet these kind of textile parts, around 5.5 lakh crores have been provided in the form of capital expenditure. Now, another major uh, uh, you know, proposal in which the Indian government of India came forward is in order to scrap the vehicles which are of commercial as well as the personal usage. So it's been there is a, a you know, uh, it is there in kind of in case of a road and transport uh, act where in order to scrap the vehicles. But now the stringent measures have been taken place where in order to scrap the vehicle, where in case of a personal it is 20 years, in case of a commercial it is 15 years, in order to protect the environment or even in order to improve the, uh, the capacity of the manufacturing sector to manufacture more and more soon after scrapping this policy. And the next important thing here is where the government is, you know, uh, giving an opportunity in order to, in order to welcome this FDI uh, when, when it comes to this insurance industry from 49% to 74%. Especially for the startups, startups, even the last year, the government has given the a tax holiday and an exemption for all the startups for one year. And the same thing is given even for one more year for all the uh, for all the startups which will start from 1st april to 31st march of 22 so it's called the, the incentive the incentives to the startups and in order to encourage the savings of uh, savings of the the senior citizens or uh, in order to protect the lives of the senior citizens the in order to reduce the burden for the senior citizens the tax compliances are completely uh, completely eliminated that means the the filing of ITRs by the people those who are more than 75 years the senior citizens are need not to file their ITR whatever may be the pension income that will be pension or maybe any other other income that will be received by the pensioners or the people or the senior citizens having more than 75 years and the tax complaints has been reduced the burden has been reduced and of course there is a disinvestment and uh, there is an ipo for the lic and many number of companies are to be uh, disinvested like uh, uh, um, uh, container corporation of india bharat movers limited and etc there is a big boost for highway projects in coal bond states of course see when it comes to the union budget there are some kind of a you know hidden uh, agendas will be there and irrespective of the government whatever may be the government they will be having their own uh, uh, their own uh, strategies see we cannot say it is intentional one where the government has given the priority for few states where the elections are maybe uh, of, uh, you know it is coming nearer when it comes to this tamil nadu west bengal and assam and kerala and in order to have a say on these kind of states, the government has given a much preference, a good preference for these states. Around 1.03 lakh crores have been given only for the highway projects for Tamil Nadu. And 65,000 crores were different kinds of works worth 65,000 crores or mainly for the Kerala. So, these are the kind of a things in which way there is a special mention made by the Honorable Finance Minister, especially in case of a, these four coal bound states, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Assam and Kerala. So they have specifically announced that there were totally, totally 2.27 lakh highway projects of which 1 lakh itself mainly for Tamil Nadu just to have a good amount of developmental works in these four states the government has an intention in order to create a world-class urban infrastructure in order to have in order to create a good infrastructure the new scheme in which in order to support the public bus transport service the government has earmarked 18,000 crores and giving the much prominence for the new technologies with respect to metro light and metro neo even the tier one and tier two cities of course tier one cities are running you know in a very smoother manner and most of the tier one cities are functioning properly and they are uh, focusing both tier one and especially the tier two cities in order to have a good connectivity at lesser cost 
and central government is funding for upcoming uh, metro railway station metro metros in kochi chennai bangalore nashik and nagpur so though the many states are already having the or uh, existing uh, the metro projects but still in order to extend the connectivity in all areas east to west north to south and having the central part the government is intent to spend uh, spend a huge amount in our by way of creating the infrastructure for this things in order to empower the weaker sections community the government has given a margin money requirement under stand up india under stand up india program and this kind of a loans loans or agricultural allied activities this margin will be earmarked to the tune of 15% and in order to have this kind of a loan it has the burden has been reduced to 15% as i said ekalavya model residential schools the government wants to set up around some 750 schools all across uh, the country with a cost of 38 38 crore rupees in the hilly regions and even in the other areas in the difficult in the remote areas or the areas where proper roads were not there in those areas to government wants to spend especially in north eastern states or even some of the hilly region areas where the commutation was the problem so around some 48 crores are ready to spend in order to spare, set up ekalavya model schools and in order to encourage uh, the higher education where the government intends to have a post matrix scholarship scheme and though the post matrix scholarship is not a new one it's been there it's been there uh, uh, from many years but still the outlay of money is been completely increasing year by year is a total revamp between uh, revamp in case of a the pmss that is to say post matrix scholarship scheme in order to benefit all sections of uh, students and mainly uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribe students and uh, um, minority students etc in order to encourage r&d and innovation the government is intended to spend around some 50000 crores in a span of 5 years in order to strengthen the research and development especially in case of a science and technology and 1500 crores have been in uh, earmarked for the financial incentives to promote digital modes payment in order to create a good technology for promoting the digital modes national language translation mission is uh, is going to set up in order to have uh, internet in major indian languages so this is what exactly the government intends to have a good amount of investment by way of encouraging the r and d and innovation even in the form of railways to the uh, union government of india is plan to have a future ready railway system in a span of 10 years so by 2030 uh, government is ready to have a national rail plan for india and exclusively for western side there is a western dedicated freight corridor dfc and the eastern corridor so that these two corridors are integrated and see that it is expected to be commenced a commission or to be started by next year this future dedicated freight corridors projects namely east corridor and the west corridor east corridor is from karakpur to vijayawada from andhra pradesh and east west corridor is from busawal to karakpur uh, and north south corridor is from itarsi to vijayawada these are the kind of lines which has been uh, identified by the department of railways in order to create a good amount of infrastructure for engine of growth and there is a record sum of 1 lakh 10000 55 crores is provided for railways of which around some 1 lakh 7100 crores is only for the capital expenditure and hardly 3 uh, 3 lakh crores 3 lakh crores is mainly sorry 3 3000 crores is mainly for other developmental activities and initiatives by the railway department the rest of 1 lakh 1.07 lakh crores is mainly for the installation of uh, the uh, infrastructure that is to say the capital expenditure for the railway department from the farmers perspective of course it is uh, you know not to the lucrative way where but still the government is uh, focusing in order to help the farmers 
is a scheme called as swamitva swamitva scheme uh, that is going to provide the record of uh, rights of property uh, mainly the farmers may not be having the more amount of uh, effective records or good records or proper records for their own property in their own uh, lands or in their own villages and that has to be improved for that the government is intended to intended to have this swamitva scheme in order to provide the record of rights of property for all the owners for all the proper uh, uh, farmers and there is a scope for, for operation green scheme that is to be extended to all 22 perishable products so when it comes to the agriculture and agricultural infrastructure funds are to be made available for all apmcs all apmcs and in order to improve the farmers uh, farmers uh, uh, marketing committees in the respective agricultural producers uh, uh, committees or the mandis and so on so even though there is a e mandi in every state in, in every state that has to be uplifted and developed so that the government intends to have uh, another 1000 more mandis to be integrated with is electronic nap next is say in order to encourage the credit facilities for the farmers the government is focusing around 16.5 lakh crores in order to increase the credit for animal husbandry department dairy department and fisheries department in order to create a good amount of infrastructure especially in the rural areas the rural infrastructure development fund is created and that has to be enhanced to around 40000 crores micro irrigation fund is to be doubled as uh, last year it was 5536 now this year the micro irrigation fund is to be doubled to the tune of uh, 10000 crores and as so far as the farmers are concerned the same kind of a scheme swamitva scheme that provides a record of rights to property owners property owners on that basis the people will be benefited in order to have a proper record for the farmers mainly for the fishery sector the people who are from the coastal regions mainly kochi chennai vishakhapatnam uh, uh, different kinds of areas and these hubs are to be uh, identified and these hubs are to be modernized these hubs are to be created with a great economic activity by having the commercial operations so inland fishing harbors and fish land centers are to be developed in order to have in order to have these kind of a you know the uh, activities their economic activities or commercial activities in the ports in the in the banks of rivers or in the ports there is a there is a proposal to have a multi-purpose seaweed park that that is going to be established in tamil nadu uh, in order to promote seaweed cultivation as an emerging sector next for as far as the housing is concerned the government has a plan in order to give the credit or the benefit for the people those who wants to take a loan for purchase and construction of their own residential house house for all concept so though there is a uh, deduction and uh, you know separately for principal or separately for interest so principal amount comes under the atc and the uh, uh, interest that will come under section 24 of uh, income tax act in addition to that in additional direction the government has is, is, is ready to give around one and a half lakh rupees for the loans taken between current year till 22. so if you are if if the people wants to have a house for their own purpose not for the commercial purpose for their own house for that is called self-occupied purpose if they are purchasing any kind of loan or constructing any kind of loan and if the loan is being taken during this particular current fiscal year and additional deduction of interest to the tune of one and a half lakh apart from 24 section to section 24 another one and a half lakh can be claimed it is a tax exemption for mainly for people those who are taking the loan and in order to increase the supply of houses as the government is, government is come, coming up with a affordable housing projects we can avail a tax holiday for one more year till 31st march 22 Though this tax exemption for notified affordable rental housing projects, it is there, it's been there, and in order to promote more number of especially for the migrant workers, as in order to settle in a particular place, especially for the migrant workers, and the government is promoting 
the supply of houses, especially for the migrant workers. What is this kind of a tax incentives to IFSC is a global financial hub. This the government has come up with come up with the incentives for these IFSCs. International Financial Services Center. It is a countries one of the reputed or one is a, the best international financial services center, which has been located at Gift City in Gujarat, Ahmedabad. So this Gift City is a, a uh, it's a, a center, it will be located in the Global Financial IT Hub, which is in Gandhinagar in Gujarat, uh, Gujarat International Financial Tech City. And in order to have a incentives to these IFSCs, the government has come, over, come forward in order to have a tax holiday for capital gains, tax exemption for aircraft leasing and uh, rentals, tax incentives for relocating the foreign funds from uh, country to country, is an exemption for investment divisions of foreign banks located in uh, uh, gift city and in order to support for development of world class fin at gift city so these are the incentives even the government is proposing mainly in order to uplift in order to make ifsc international financial service center as the world class center or this particular center is going to cater to the needs not only to the not only to the Gujarat, even to the all the parts of this country. So, in the later stages, this International Financial Services Center is going to cater to the needs of all the people all across the country. And even making natural gas available to all, accessible to all, the government is planning to have a Ujwala scheme that will be extended in order to cover one crore beneficiaries all across the, all across the country. 100 more districts to be added in the next three years by way of a city gas distribution network. It's a uh, uh, kind of a you know, line that will be installed connecting the district to district with the, having the gas pipeline. Gas pipeline project is to be taken up exclusively in the unit territory of Jammu and Kashmir. And in a phased manner, the cylinder system is going to be scrapped and mainly the permanent uh, gas pipeline is going to be uh, installed in almost all the parts of the country and there are some kind of a proposals for the migrant and migrant laborers or the migrants from all across the country where they are thus this section of people they have suffered a lot especially during the covid pandemic and in order to uplift their position uplift their position the government has launched one nation one ration card scheme as these people move from one place to another place, one state to another state, one corner to another corner, they are not in a position to get their portion of ration in the as of as of present day trend. As the ration card belongs to one particular state, they have to claim only in that particular state where the government has planned in order to have a one ration card where they can claim their portion of the ration in any part of this particular country. So that is the, the best suggestion, uh, best proposal where the Indian government of India has come up with. And not only that, where there is a restriction with respect to women being working, uh, you know, beyond the normal working hours, uh, where women will be allowed to work even in all categories, in all night shift also, with adequate protection. There was a restriction, but now the government is coming forward in order to encourage the people because of their livelihood, they need to work irrespective of the nature of the organization or irrespective of nature of the shift, but not on a compulsion mode, compulsion mode, but it is purely on voluntary mode. So that is another uh, proposal that the government is being uh, proposed. And for MSMEs, the government has reviewed that. the so old customs duty is exempted, exempted in this particular year more than 400 old custom duties exempted here and there is a conciliation mechanism is to be set up for quick resolution of contractual disputes and around 16,000 crores are to be provided for the MSME, msme sector for the development of uh, for the development or upliftment or for expansion of these msmes in this year Government wants to provide a nutrition and clean water supply. As most of the, you know, some parts of the countries are facing the clean water supply. 
even there are tier one cities too are suffering the clean water supply. The government has come up with a Jaljeevan mission in the urban area where they wanted to have universal water supply for all around 4,378 urban local bodies with 2.86 crore household tap connections will be provided uh, and liquid waste management in 500 Amrit cities. So it will be implemented in over a period of five years and that will be having an outlay of around some 3 lakh crores. These 3 lakh crore, 3, 3 lakh crore rupees will be spent in the span of five years just to, to have a clean water for everybody. Then, Swast Bharat Yojana. Swast Bharat Yojana is mainly for the health and wellness of the uh, health, health and wellness of the citizens, where 17,788 rural and 11,024 urban health wellness centers are to be established in 11 states, 3,382 districts, 602 critical CC critical care hospital blocks are to be constructed in 12 central institutions and national center for disease control is to be strengthened apart from this the government wants to have an integrated health information portal and that is going to operate in 17 new public health units phus government wants to set up 15 health emergency operations so this shows that how the government is so serious about protecting the health of the people Government wants to encourage the people who belongs to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe by way of providing this post metric scholarship scheme and with an outlay of 35,000 crores and Ekalave model residential schools are to be set up with 38 and 48,000 crores in the hilly regions and uh, difficult areas and margin money requirement for stand up India to be reduced to 15%. It was earlier 28%. And by we are providing all these kind of facilities where we can uplift the position of the tribes and caste. There's a strategic disinvestment and mainly for BPCL, Air India, Container Corporation of India, IDBA, BML, Pavanhams and uh, uh, DLHI is Patnikam. So these are all the, uh, you know, the sectors in which the government intends to have disinvested and IPO is to, uh, IPO to be given or to be launched for the LIC Life Insurance Corporation of India. Uh, in the year 21-22 and there is a proposal to relax this condition regarding carry forward of losses for disinvestment how long we can carry forward the same kind of losses year to year that has to be scrapped and they wanted to relax this kind of a condition not to carry forward this kind of a losses for year and year and year to year and in order to promote strategic disinvestment the government the government wants to transfer of assets by the PSUs to the resulting company as a tax neutral. When it comes to education sector, the government wants to, government already has set up this is Higher Education Commission of India under one umbrella. As we have UGC, we have AACT, we have NAC, uh, one regulating body, one funding body, one accreditation body. We have a different kinds of bodies that have been set up under Ministry of HRD. Now, Ministry of Education has come up with one kind of a commission that's called Higher Education Commission of India. And in this kind of a commission is going to set up a standards for the education and accreditation for the education and regulations for the education institutions and funding pattern of the higher education institution. Uh, plans to have a central university in the Leh Ladakh region and where the, the, the that particular area is, uh, you know, to a greater extent it is ignored in uh, many years and where the students are deprived of higher education, so government intends to have uh, an university at Ladakh. And the government is going to have a professional standards mainly for the teachers are concerned. And for that, the government is uh, uh, you know, spending around some 80,000 80, crores, especially for higher education. As the reducing compliance burden for the taxpayers, where I said the senior citizens are exempted for filing the returns and in case in case there is a uh, there is a transfer of money from one place to another place from uh, nris especially the nris notifying the rules for removing the hardship and there is a relief for the dividend where dividend payment for example a dividend payment uh, is exempted from the tds 
and advanced tax liability and dividend income shall arise only after the declaration or only after payment of dividend there is a relief for small trust that is to say an exemption limit uh, is been uh, uh, increased from 1 crore to 5 crores any kind of a small trust are running the educational institutions or the schools where the if the gross receipts gross receipts if it increases up to 5 crore they are exempted from tax limit as it was earlier 1 crore rupees it is a good move for uh, institutions uh, for uh, the charities and the trust which uh, which are running they mainly educational institutions and so on there is a mega investment textile parks as i said earlier uh, there are some kind of a pros and cons for uh, uh, this kind of a tax in one way it is good there is a good amount of capital investment pushed for the growth is that there is a reintroduction of developmental financial institutions mainly allocation of uh, uh, 35000 crores for covid vaccination this budget is mainly industry sector specific interventions are there mainly industry focused there are bold decisions are to expand the physical deposit to provide growth impetus has been identified and it is good that the good amount of investment has been made in order to create the infrastructure to make medium and long term vision for self reliant india Electrical vehicles are to be encouraged where the GST has been slashed from 12% uh, to 5%. The income tax department has given uh, interchangeability from Aadhaar to PAN card. Even if, you, if the person doesn't have a PAN card, he can mention the Aadhaar card, he can file the returns. So that option is there. Government waives the MDR charges, that's called merchant discount charges. Merchant discount uh, rates won't be charged on business with a yearly turnover of 50 crore 50 crore so that charges will be waived off by the government there's a breather on angel tax especially for the investors where they can gain this kind of tax uh, exemption for one more year 3000 pension will be given for all informal se informal sector employees around some 30 lakh crore uh, 30 lakh workers are benefited out of it and this 3000 rupees per month pension will be given for the inform informal sector employees whose age is more than 60 years and though there is a fiscal deposit of 9.5% uh, uh, it is going to uh, it is going to be, it's been increasing but there is a chance that it is going to come down in the next and subsequent years quarters capital expenditure has been increased by 35% it is a good move that the government is creating a good amount of infrastructure for the benefit of uh, generations to next and the government wants to merge this NRI portfolio with the FPI, that's called foreign portfolio investment. And certain kind of things we need to wait and watch where the government has raising the minimum shareholding pattern. This minimum the shareholding pattern is to some extent it is a negative for several, several MNC companies who are closely managed with the business and that may reduce the skin in the game by way of by way of the shareholder pattern from 25 percent to 35 percent the listed companies where they may they wanted to come back that they were they wanted to delist the mainly for the purpose of the risk because the raise in the stake in the listed companies is desirable but there will be a practical constraints for the organizations so there will be a floating floating as far as the companies are concerned where it may suck the liquidity by making more floating uh, more, more floating stocks in secondary markets. When it comes to the cons of the, the negative aspects of the budget is uh, the duty on petrol and the metal items are increased. Custom duty on AC has been raised. There's a tax on super rich community. There's an imp uh, du import duty on uh, imported books that discourages the, uh, the students or uh, readers community who wants to import the uh, books and one major thing is called there is no change in tax rate system or the tax structure where many people in the country especially the sal salaried community were disappointed and there are some kind of a changes in the income tax act where ATEA that is called interest on loan another additional uh, deduction can be claimed around 1,50,000 if the employee contribution is deposited by the employer with a delay the employer cannot claim the exemption so it is uh, 
the employer is the defaulter so employer cannot claim the deduction if at all any kind of a delay is there and there is a tds on purchase if the sales is more than 10 crores so with effect from 1st july 21 the tds on purchase is to be made under section 194q if the sales or the turnover are more than 10 crores where the tds is at the rate of 0.1 percent and there is an amendment to the section 206 that is tds is to be paid at 5 percent if pan is not provided that is to say without pan card you know without pan assist and there will be a deduction to start a startup that will be extended to all startups that is to say tax holiday so under section 80 iac where the total deduction and that means to say they are exempted from the things and under 80 a yeah, sorry 80 iba there will be a deduction to affordable housing that will be extended for one more year under section 44 ada Earlier, there was a presumptive taxation for limited liability partnership. Now that has been uh, removed. Presumptive taxation is not applicable for limited liability partnership firms. Under section 206AB and 206CCA, there is going to be a higher rate of TDS and TCS tax collection source, uh, tax collected at source on for non-filing the returns. If the people are not filing the returns, the charges will be twice the rate or the 5% whichever is higher it is going to burden the pockets of the defaulters so it is better to file the returns well in within the stipulated time as specified by the income tax department and one good thing is called the charitable trust running the schools and hospitals they are exempted with respect to the taxes concerned whose turnover whose receipts gross receipts are up to five crores this is a minor change when it comes to the definition of companies act where the, uh, the requirements of small companies, where the company's paid up capital, earlier the condition was not exceeding 50 lakhs, now it has been announced to 2 crore rupees. So not exceeding 2 crore rupees or not exceeding 20 crore rupees when it comes to turnover, that will be renamed as a small companies. So where, where in total, if you look at the entire budget, uh, we being the citizens of this particular nation, it's quite common that winners are the losers. Of course, this is only a, a just, just in that some of the people are winners, some of the people are losers. It is not, and you can't say losers, where it is kind of a burden on the part of those people or I, where the benefits are not according to their expectation. So on that basis, they'll say that they are not getting anything. Hence, they are not getting anything. They'll be treated as losers. So winners are most kind of things is hospitals, real estate industry, metal makers, state run banks, textile industry, where in this budget, especially for the IT firms, our special, special economic zones are not given priority. IT firms are not given priority. Our international technological parks of India, ITPI, were not given priority. And most of the exporters not given any kind of a tax holidays and the benefits. And when it comes to the bonds are concerned, it is penalized before these are the losers. But we being a citizen, where we can, we can expect many things from this particular nation, but we need to remember that nothing is going to bring the peace except an individual himself. So with this note, with this note, I would like to conclude the budget which has been given by the Union Government of India, which is purely on the basis of the consideration from all sectors of the country, ups and downs are common. It all depends upon the way in which we analyze the things. But the entire budget, it is only for the benefit of all Indian citizens. So let us hope for the best. And in order to have good health for every citizen of this particular India, and even we need to hope that government is going to spend whatever may be the budget that has been allocated in a more appropriate and transparent manner. See that every pie, every pie is belongs to the, the citizens of this particular country. And the, the, uh, the policy makers or the politicians or the people who are under the ministry are held responsible for effective implementation. At the end of the day, See, mere preparing the budget is not so important. See that how far, how effectively, how quickly, how tactfully, how strategically they have implemented this budget that has been prepared by the 
Ministry of Finance. That matters a lot. And see that every state needs to take the advantage of the uh, the share share from the respective or uh, share from the country, and the respective states cannot completely depend upon only on the share of the respective uh, share on the country's country's budget. Even the respective state needs to generate sufficient amount of funds, and they need to prioritize the way in which they are going to spend for the benefit of every citizen. So with this note, I conclude and my sincere thanks to uh, the, all the organizers of uh, St. Philomena's College, in particular, the Reverend Father and W.R. Principal and heads of the department and all the faculty members. And I, I must say, I thank everybody uh, for giving me this an opportunity in order to share my thoughts. And uh, thank you one and all. Thank you. A program cannot end without expressing gratitude. May I now request Dr. Sunil de Souza, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, to propose the vote of thanks. Hello, Professor. Before going to uh, render vote of thanks, can I ask a few questions which is raised? Yeah, please. Hello, yeah, please. Go ahead. Go ahead okay. please. There is one question from our principal, Madam. She asked, uh, recently, there is an uh, announcement from IMF uh, projecting uh, India's uh, growth. Okay, that is 11 point some percentage. So, uh, how a common man can understand this? See, the growth of any kind of a country can be better understood only by the statistics, the numbers. The growth can be measured by way of the domestic product, what we call it as the GDP. Okay. Of course, the calculations by way of the countries which will be completely amount spent by each and every human being, that is to say, the consume, uh, to total amount that has been consumed at the spend, large sections, large section of people's the calculations will be eliminated under that way where the calculations may go wrong. One thing. Second thing is the growth of every country cannot be measured only on a particular parameter. The growth of every country, growth of every country can be measured by way of the health, by way of the wealth, by way of uh, the infrastructure, or by way of the transparency, by way of good governance, by way of the you know avoidance of uh, red tape, red tapeism, and so on. So there are many parameters in which one needs to consider, consider with respect to the growth, growth of respective country. When we compare with the other other nations, with this particular, uh, uh, we, we, uh, with our nation, our parameters are totally different because sometimes it is not fair on our part in order to compare with other nations when it comes to the growth uh, index is concerned. In most of the parameters, when it comes to the science or a technology or manufacturing or maybe consumables or maybe retail industry or health industry, in many areas, many areas, that India is performing far, far better than any other country. But one the thing is, the one kind of a saddest part is, the government is not in a position to retail, government is not in a position to retain the young talents within India. If the same talent has been retained not to be exported to any other part of the uh, country, definitely India will become the, the best nation, I can say, when it comes to the growth is concerned. If you take an example of any nation is concerned, every Indian is in a good position because of their personal growth, where they may be denied the opportunity in this particular nation. And if the same kind of human talent has been retained in this nation, definitely our India would have been become much more greater, well in advance itself, need not to wait for further more years. So these are the things in which we consider when it comes to the growth index of a, a nation is concerned. That is my personal view. Uh, so there is a, a allocation of a budget for higher education institutions. Yeah. So, but when we see uh, after twelfth commission, the UGC has stopped almost funding for uh, research, all those yeah. things, minor yeah. research or major research. So, yeah. is there any uh, chances of considering from this uh, budget? for higher education, especially See, for research yeah, activities. That's fine. See, when it comes to the actual statistics which has been laid down in the budget, 
though they have earmarked huge amount of money for research and development but the less percentage mainly for traditional and conventional universities we the people we come under around some 786 universities comes under traditional and conventional universities like art science commerce and so on the research which will be undertaken in these kind of universities may not be helpful for policy making that is the intention of the policy making body that's the only reason where most of the minor research projects and major research projects have been almost stopped by ugc the funding pattern by the ugc university grants commission to all the institutions eligible to receive that is to say 2f and 12b by the registered by registered colleges or the institutions or the universities it is reduced it is because of because of the pattern that has been decided in case of a, a funding pattern is concerned second thing is second thing is hardly 75000 crores have been earmarked for the entire higher education in that maximum share will go to the central universities that is called centrally funded universities there are 48 centrally funded universities where the each and everything that has been earmarked uh, that will be taken care by the ministry of hrd of course, there is a kind of a biased system when it comes to earmarking the funds from funds between state universities and central universities, but we cannot blame them because the policy as far as the central university is concerned, everything will be taken care by UGC, that is to say MHRD. When it comes to state universities of the state, where 18 has to be taken care by the respective state, apart from the salaries, the almost all the development activities has to be taken care by respective states that is the contention of uh, ugc so with respect to research is concerned i think whatever may be the strata the what you call the status which was there in the last year the same thing is to deteriorate that is my opinion okay sir thank you uh, there is one more question that is always and now i think it is with all so that is uh, petrol price or uh, diesel price yeah. uh, it is almost increasing and now they started with the new cess yeah. so uh, how it is uh, barrel price is uh, low but still petrol and diesel price is increasing day by day so what is the reason behind that see i i happen to uh, look at the details of what exactly the basic price what is the state tax what is the central tax uh, if you look at those kind of figures where there is a total disparity between the state share and uh, what you call the central share so when it comes to fixation it is purely a policy making body nothing is in our hands and as the price is price is being regulated by the ministry in the science what the ministry says is hardly we receive 17 percent of tax out of the the per liter take for example around 90 rupees in that 90 rupees the base price may be around some 35 rupees base price that is to say the basic price of uh, a per liter now the same 35 out of 35 rupees around 17 rupees comes to the uh, central and the remaining 24 rupees will go to the state and uh, around some four rupees will go to the dealer's margin this is kind of a break that has been given in the study i happen to see the same kind of a thing need to authentic need to uh, ensure the authenticity subject to this but the policy as far as the government is concerned they need to have they need to generate more amount of resources by way of taxes that's the only way now in order to reduce the tax portion when it comes to the diesel is concerned where to compensate that one that needs to be identified if you look at the total budget 34 lakh crores out of 34 lakh crores 67 64 percent can be generated through taxes cess or charges or uh, various kinds of duties around 34 percent will come only from the loans only from the borrowings if this tax is reduced the center's contention is they cannot they cannot impose on anybody else so the trend is being continued trend is being continued if you compare with other countries or maybe the neighboring countries it is much lower that is the policy so the policy makers needs to rethink and reorient in order to reduce this kind of taxes on the part of the price per liter of petrol or diesel or any kind of crude oil and so much of tax benefits will be given for the richer and richest say for example any corporate 
or any kind of a startup or any kind of a the bigger organizations the the union government of india has come up with the good amount of facilities amenities or tax breakups or tax holidays or and so on but in honest taxpayer if for example a salaried person he is not given a chance even a rupee is concerned so like that the government needs to revitalize the policies with respect to the fixation of the the petrol or diesel price where the tax burden has to be reduced out of it then only there is a possibility of uh, uh, reducing the the price per liter and that has to be compensated in other ways it could be an industry or corporate sectors or so much of uh, tax holidays have been given for a good number of companies that has to be reduced yeah okay so uh, when they introduce gst uh, there is a prediction that by 2021 uh these petroleum petrol and diesel product will be brought under gst but it is not happened so is there any uh, chances of again predicting so see as far as academic bent of mind is different as a policy maker is totally different yeah. we being a person for example we we are sitting in the you know the chamber in a academic atmosphere we think in a different dimension that see that the benefit must be given to everybody where where it has to come under the ambit of gst that is our contention when it comes to that one automatically it can be streamlined as far as the percentage is concerned it has to come in the slab of 0% or 5% or 12% or 18% something like that but the government contention contention is it is totally different there are some kind of a political interventions are there political biased policies are there or uh, i can say there are certain things which cannot be explained and but still i think so it may not come in the ambit of gst gst okay yeah. okay thank you professor for your detailed presentation with uh, mind blowing ppt that is uh, attracted more and also the presentation with each time explaining each and every uh, components of uh, budget 2021 thank you from uh, thank you on behalf of management and uh, department of uh, commerce and philomena's college thank you sir thank you i i thank uh, reverend for dr bernard prakash banis for his support in organizing this thank event uh, thank you father i also thank uh, uh, maria xavier vice rector john paul campus administrator uh, administrator for their support in organizing this event i also thank uh, dr tiru santu kumari principal Uh, for her support in organizing this event as well as giving her presidential remark during the session thank you madam i also thank uh, mr prakash kutino iqsc coordinator for his presence and also support in organizing this event i thank uh, dr rina francis hod department of commerce and all faculty members for their support in organizing this program i thank uh, Ms. Zaiba Banu, the comparing uh, comparer of uh, this session, uh, thank you. I also thank all uh, students and uh, faculty members from the uh, uh, Saint Philomena's College as well as faculties from uh, other institutions. I can see uh, faculties from Saint Aloysius College and other institutions. They were part of this event. Uh, thanks to all for your participation. I also thank uh, uh, John. john sir and uh, swaminathan sir for their technical support once again i thank all for your active participation thank you thank you so thank you